You know, we get asked that question a lot, but the thing is, like, nothing really. So, Let's rework the question. The real world's kind of intimidating almost. You go through withdrawals for a while. Because, you know, you, you, you just see how inefficient this whole society is uh, when you, oh, when you get down. Because some, there's so many hard people working towards a common goal here. What's your favorite part about the day so far? Every time I die, I'm going to sleep. All the sweet jams. Yeah. All the sweet jams? You guys bought any merch today? Yeah, I did. I have a whole backpack. Sure. Uh, how many years in a row have you guys been in the Warp Tour? This is first time. First time? First time. like when you were younger you know growing up did you come to Warp Tour and check it out actually no I didn't uh, we did five days last year and that was my first Warp Tour ever I never came I live in Arkansas wow. it doesn't really come through there that much um, you know if, if I when I was growing up if I wanted to see uh, you know a big a bigger show I had to drive and so that was pretty uh, rare if we if I ever did that so. oh wow that's that's now that's a cool experience for, to tell someone that your first warp tour was when you're playing, you yeah, know? Yeah. At warp tour you play a 30 minute set and you've got 23 and a half hours of nothing. How, how do you fill that time? Are you reading books and playing video games? Um, we just kind of just chill out like um, every day is different, but we do have others like, you know, of course we come and do interviews and stuff like that. We talk about the record and um, we're also right in the middle of like doing everything for our record, so we kind of try to keep ourselves occupied with promoting that and like getting the word out about that because we, we have a lot of faith in it. We wanted to we want to push it more than anything. But there is a lot of downtime, there is a lot of boredom, so. At Warp Tour, there's a lot of Christians or Christian in bands that have been on tour the last few years. What is your perception of Jesus and how did you get that perception? My perception of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Um, in relation to, uh, you can you had explain this before. Yeah, you know, we just, everyone growing up, either growing up in the church, out of the church, has a perception and opinion they form of Jesus, whether they believe he is the Savior and the Messiah, yeah. or whether he's not. You know, I believe he's my Savior. Yeah. So we're just asking you to just, what is your actual perception? How did you get it? You know, growing up, how did you learn who Jesus was and come to know it? Um, actually, like growing up, like I wasn't really raised um, in a Christian family at all. Um, something I kind of figured out on my own when I was older. I actually kind of much older. Like um, um, I was all I was late teens, almost in my twenties. So, but yeah, I believe there's one God and that He created everything, and that He has a Son named Jesus, and He's our Savior. That's totally what I believe. And I know that not from attending churches or, um, you know, gr growing up and, and learning that from my family. I, I, I know it from my own personal experiences, um, having children very young and dealing with that, being a single parent and um, trying to do music, you know, through all that, through all those times, like, it, I learned through my own um experiences so. touring you see a lot of homelessness i'm on the road sure you know you're in all these different cities you're seeing homeless kids sometimes and people what what do you think about homelessness you know i mean i think um there's a lot of different directions you can come from because i i, I do believe that there are people out there that um are down on their luck i've definitely been like no car, live in my mom's basement, two kids on my own, can't find a job, um, try, you know, finding a job, walking to work every day. Like, I know how you can be so close to that. And, you know, there's people who just get caught up in, in, in 
some terrible things and terrible things happen to people. And there's definitely people down on their luck, but I also believe that if uh, you know you want to live somewhere and you want to you want to do something with your life, you have to go do it. You have to work for it. You can't. It's not going to be handed to you. And um, I know in this country more than anywhere, um, there is a lot of that mentality. So if you want to do something, get off your butt and go do it. It's that simple. But there are two different sides to that. You know, there's definitely people that um, are just having a hard time, and they need to be helped. And I believe in in, in helping people for the most part. When how have gas prices affected touring and just being a musician for you? It definitely affects us. Um, you know, touring is our livelihood, and it's it's not just how we promote our band and our music. It's it's um, how we make money, and it's our business. So. Well, gas is definitely in the budget, you know, and we're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on that a week. So, um, you know, we we have to drive at night, can't drive during the day. We gotta, you know, be careful, be thrifty. Tell us a little bit about what we can see with Norma Jean in the future. Well, we have our new record comes out August 5th. It's called The Anti-Mother. Um, it's the, definitely the best record we've ever done. The record's very personal. It's we didn't pull any punches at all. Like it's exactly things we've gone through. They're, they're real events. Um, we didn't dumb it down at all, and it has a lot of angst. But also musically, it's the heaviest record we've ever made. It's also the most melodic. Uh, we just combine those two two um, um, aspects of, of what we like about music and. Everything that we're into, we just went for it on this record for sure. You know, you're on the Warp Tour, there is, with all the bands changing, there's hundreds of bands. Do you get chances to just meet other bands and kick it with them and get to know them and uh, kind of take a break from the guys in your own band? Yeah, yeah we, we've actually toured with most of the bands, a lot of the bands on this tour. And so they've already been friends of ours for a long time. All the dudes from Hazley Dying, um, August Burns Red dudes, we know them. We've played shows with Against Me. Um, um, we know the dudes from, from Say Anything. We're all friends, everybody on the tour. Like, we all stick together. And the one thing that's really good about this tour is like, um, Kevin keeps us kind of all together all the time. Every night there's a barbecue after the show. Um, there's a band that, the whole reason they're on the tour that it's a barbecue for all the bands. So you meet everybody by the barbecue at night. And it just keeps us out of trouble, it keeps us from wandering off the premises or like, doing anything like really dumb so um, yeah we, we hang out like the whole tour sticks together it's, we help each other out hey what's up it's Seth from the hire I just want to let you guys know we're gonna be recording a new record called it's only natural it's gonna be coming out in January look for a digital EP out this fall come hang out with us we'll be on tour hanging out with you guys thanks love you guys I saw you on Fiddler and found a promo to record store in Florida when I was traveling like Jeez, years ago. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm I was like, I'm just gonna buy this and check it out. Yeah.